Good evening. I'm Dave Ledius. I'm the president of the Door Peninsula Astronomical Society, and I'm here tonight to go over our library telescope program. It's a program that a lot of people are not familiar with yet, even though it's been around for approximately three years now. And what it is, is it's a telescope that you can check out just like a book. So uh, if you're interested in seeing the moon, you want to look at some of the nebulas, maybe you want to try to see the rings, uh, you know, the rings <coughs> and the moons of both uh, Saturn and Jupiter, you can do that with this scope. Even though it's a small scope, it's a fairly powerful scope and it's a scope that will allow you to get a real nice introduction into astronomy without having to pay a thing. Because if you have a library card, you can come into the library and you can check out a scope. Uh, the nice thing with this scope, it's made by Orion, uh, a very well-known telescope manufacturer. It's called their Star Blast model, and it's about a four inch reflector telescope. It's mounted on a very solid base, which means it will be uh, stable, so you're not gonna get a lot of vibrations. And it's very easy to transport. You got a handle right here, you got a base right here. You can pick it up and you can, uh, you can do things with it as far as hauling it around. Um, go out to a park, go out in your backyard, set it up on a picnic table. Anywhere that's a reasonably solid base, you can set it up. It will pivot, so you can point it this direction. It's got a little lock knob on the side, so you can adjust it up and down. So between those two things, you can point this pretty much anywhere in the sky that you want to point it to. A couple of things you need to know when you're using a scope like this is, number one, we have our um, lens cap on the end. The lens cap just comes off like this. It's tethered on, so you can't lose it in the dark. And it just comes off, you set it off to the side. You also have a lens cap on the eyepiece. This is a really unique eyepiece on this scope because normally we have a different eyepiece for every magnification that we want to look at. However, on this scope, they simplified it so people just getting into it aren't gonna have a lot of pieces to lose in the dark or step on. And what it is is you simply turn this knob right here and it's a variable zoom eyepiece. This one is from seven to 21 millimeters of zoom and you just dial it in. So you start off with a very um, wide angle so you can find your image that you wanna look at. And then what you do is if you wanna look at it and get a little closer view, you simply dial the, the ring and it's just like a pair of zoom binoculars or if you're a hunter, like a rifle scope, it'll just zoom right in and bring your object closer to you. So pretty simple to use. As far as focusing, fo focusing knob right here on the side, you turn that and that will adjust it for your eye so that you get a clear picture. Um, as far as trying to find something, that's the biggest complaint most people have with their telescopes is they want to see something and it's up there and they can't find it in the viewfinder. Well, this has a viewfinder that's very simple to use out here on the scope next to the eyepiece. You simply get down, you look up, and you get it in the middle of that little round circle, and if that's in, it should be in in the scope. We've aligned these so that it should be fairly close, and I know periodically we have people come around to the scopes from our organization, and they realign them and make certain that they're working the way they're supposed to be working. Could you explain that side one again? Yes. <clears throat> this one right here? Yeah. This is a focusing knob. So what you do is when you're looking through it at whatever it is that you're in there, you will adjust this a little bit back and forth until it adjusts the focus so that it's well, clear. what's the round thing around that for then? This one up here? Yeah. That's to zoom in and out and make the picture bigger and smaller. Oh. Yeah, it's a, it's a zoom lens. You won't have to turn this at all if you don't want to, but it's kind of a neat thing that you have essentially about four lenses in one here instead of having right. to have and different lenses. And then what lenses. did you say on the thing on the side? This is our viewfinder. What the viewfinder is for, the viewfinder allows us to align the scope. So what you're going to do is, if you're trying to align it on the moon, you kind of point it in the general direction of the moon, and you get down here, you get behind it, and you look up the barrel of the scope, and what it's going to do is, it is going to um, project whatever you're looking at through here. This has a very wide angle, and so what happens is this is a wide angle, this is a very narrow angle, even though it's a lot bigger tool. This will give you a big chunk of the sky, and then what you do is you simply just adjust the scope back and forth, up and down, until you get what you're looking at in that one. You tighten it down, and then you look through here, and then you can see it. 
Isn't there a light inside there? There is. Why there's is a little switch that, that there's a little switch that we just turn on and it's a little slip one right here. And what it does is it projects the knot usually um, out here. And then what you do is you just put that red dot in the center. And then when you're done using it, you just click it, turn it off. A lot of times people you turn it off, it's still it's still on it. Yeah, it's just used for alignment. It projects that little red dot on there. And when all that does is, is it gives you a chance to tune it in. Now, one thing you have to be careful of with the scope like this, because this is a relatively powerful scope, what ends up happening is, um, for instance, everybody always wants to look at the moon when it's big and bright. Yeah. It's probably not the best time to look at the moon because it's too bright. You can actually hurt your eye by looking at the moon through here because um, of the brightness. So what we've got here is on this lens cap, you punch out that hole and it's tied on, which makes it a little bit of a challenge. But what you do is you put the lens cap back on with that hole visible and that limits the amount of light that can come in. And so if you're looking at the moon when it's bright, that's the way you want to do it. And that way it protects your eyes. So you don't have any problems um, damaging your retinas. Now, for just storage, you snap that back in, you close it up, and you keep the dust out of the tube. Mm -hmm. So it works out real nice in that regard. Um, one other thing, you never, ever, ever want to look at the sun through a telescope without proper filters. Because you will, first off, you'll damage the telescope if you point it through and you shoot the bright sun through the lenses. Second off, you'll burn out your eyes and you'll go blind. So it's all bad stuff. Um, these scopes inside this pouch that comes with it, you have this little tin foil looking filter. And that's a solar filter. And basically, you just snap that on in place of the lens cap. It's like an aluminum looking tin foil type filter. And that will actually only allow a very limited amount of sun to come through. And then you can actually safely look at the sun as long as that filter is in. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, it was used extensively back when we had the solar eclipse a couple years ago. We had over a thousand people out at the Astronomy Center for that, and uh, we had all kinds of people looking at it. And we have a big king size filter like this on our big scope um, for doing that. So that comes in there. In addition to that, um, we have a couple of books that come in, the, in this red pouch, little fanny pack that's attached to it. And there's some really neat stuff in there. Uh, the National Audubon Society has a pocket guide to constellations, which is included. Wow. Constellations are kind of neat things. Uh, if you come out to the observatory or the planetarium, we have, excuse me, the astronomy center, we have the planetarium set up there on viewing nights. And we can actually show some of these, um, we can show all of them actually, the constellations and how to find them when you go look up in the sky. So it's some pretty neat stuff in that regard. And different times of the year, different constellations are visible based on the rotation of the Earth. So we've got a nice guide for that if you're getting started. And then it also comes with a, a general little guidebook on what are all the parts of the telescope and then how do you use some of this stuff. So a lot of the stuff that I just went through is covered in this little book. You don't need to be an expert by any means. You just kind of have to have an interest and go out and start looking around and see what you see. Okay. Yeah. Um, other than that, I and then guess. When you check it out, how long can you have it? I think it's a week, isn't it? I think it goes up for a week. Yeah. You can renew it once or something. Yep. And, and that's a fairly common thing. Now, one other thing we would ask is because this is an optical instrument and it's a, believe it or not, it's a fairly expensive scope, um, these are, they have a built in handle right here. You grab it by the base, and this is how you carry it around. When you put it in your car, Ideally, it would be a type of thing that you want to either put it somewhere in the back where, you know, the back seat or the back floor, somewhere stable where it's not going to be tipping over. Or if you have to put it on a seat, snap the seat belt across it just to keep it from flopping around in your car. And, and that usually uh, gives us a little extra safety there uh, and we can go from there. What you really need to understand is even though this is a pretty small and compact telescope, a very powerful telescope and you can actually see a lot of things with it mm -hmm. and um, it's a great scope for an introduction to find out if it's something that you want to um, uh, get in and go further maybe buy your own scope 
the biggest mistake a lot of people make is with telescopes, they go out and they buy one for their kids or themselves for, at Christmas at a big box store. And they advertise 500 power and all this other stuff. In reality, you're not gonna see hardly anything out of those scopes. They're not worth the money you're spending on. So I would say it'd be far better thing to come to the library, check out the scope a couple of times, poke around, see what it can do. And then uh, also, what I would encourage people to do, um, I've got a sheet here with our viewing nights. We have one viewing night a month out at the Door Peninsula Astronomical Society at the end of Utah Street. Um, check out the scope, bring it out there on a viewing night. We have experts out there that can help you use it and learn how to do things and see stuff with it. So rather than you know even try to do it on your own, if you want some little extra help, a little hand holding that first time, come on out to the um, Astronomy Center on one of our viewing nights and, and one of our board members or, or regular members will, uh, will be happy to help you uh, go out there and learn how to use something like this. Yeah, I have found that actually. Mm -hmm. It's not, you think it's gonna be really simple, but it's not simple for a new person. It's one of the things that most, out. one of the things that most people don't realize on this sort of a thing is that, okay, I've got it. Now I look through my alignment scope. I got my target in. I'm looking through here and yep, I've got it in there. I look away for a minute and I come back and it's gone. Yeah. And it's not because the telescope moved. Yeah. The earth moved. <laughs> and the earth's rotation, mm -hmm. if you set it up, you know, if you get this thing aligned right, you're going to notice your object creeping across the view field relatively quickly. And our big scope out at the Astronomy Center has a built-in motor on it, which will move at the exact same speed that the Earth is moving, so our stuff stays dead center at all times. But a little scope like this doesn't have any motors attached to it. It's not electrical other than the little dot that projects on the viewfinder. So in order to keep it in the viewfinder while you're looking, you're gonna have to slowly be nudging it a little bit by little bit, possibly up and down just a little bit, and, and to keep it what you're looking at in the viewfinder. Otherwise, if you look away for a couple minutes and come back, it won't be there anymore. <laughs> so, it is, it is. And that's something that most new people are a little bit amazed to realize how fast the earth really does move when you start looking at an object up there. Mm -hmm. Right. You can't see it with the naked eye. Most of it you can't. Uh, the moon obviously is one of those things that you can see every night. Most people don't think of the moon as a great target to view, but I find the moon to be an incredible target to view. In fact, that's what we're gonna be focusing on this Saturday mm -hmm. due to the anniversary, 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 landing on the moon. Man, the first time man stepped foot on the moon. We're having a special event out at the Astronomy Center uh, where we're gonna focus just on lunar viewing. So the moon is actually a pretty cool thing to look at due to the craters and the plateaus and you know the dark spots, the light spots, you can see a lot of stuff on the moon and you don't need a full moon. Actually, I think when it's a slim crescent is some of the best times to look because the shadows really can magnify the depth perception on the moon mm -hmm. when it's not full. But if it is full, you wanna be popping this, uh, this small thing out, limiting the amount of light that's coming in so that you aren't having uh, any damage because this will be pretty darn bright on a full moon. Mm -hmm. And are you giving those papers? Yes, right? yep, you're welcome to take one on your way out. We've got our, our Facebook page, we've got our website, check on those things. If you're not already, uh, friend us on Facebook so you get updates. Right now we've been having a lot of updates coming through on the uh, Apollo, some of the cool facts that are out there. There's a lot of really neat stuff going on right now because of the 50th anniversary. The you know CNN's had a whole bunch of stuff on lately with some specials. Uh, public television, I think, has had a few. Um, there's been stuff on almost all the different uh, channels uh, regarding some of this stuff, and and it kind of culminates on Saturday. So. Yeah, Saturday is the anniversary, isn't it? Yeah, right now they, they're in transit. Actually, they blasted off yesterday. Yeah. yeah, I think it was the 17th, they blasted off. And then, uh, you know, right now they're in transit 50 years ago on their way to the moon and they will uh, set foot on the moon on Saturday, so. Why is it Saturday listed on here? Because when we printed those up, we didn't have our lunar uh, special plans. So we didn't oh. uh, we didn't have those on there, but it is Saturday, so come on out, check it out. Have you seen the film, The First Man, which is based on the I have not, but I heard it's wonderful. It is very good. Yeah. yeah. Um, we just had a, I just saw a presentation of the Apollo 11 
uh, stuff they had, I don't even know, I think it was put on by CNN that actually did this, but they took a lot of the actual archive footage of news clips of, you know, stuff that was going on and they freshened them all up, you know, restored them and made a half hour, 45 minute um, movie off of the, the thing and amazing. Yeah. It really was. Um, you know, when you see how crude some of that equipment was, it's a miracle that we got there and back <laughs> as many times as we did. But, uh, but no, it's really cool stuff, and I've been interested in this kind of stuff since high school. We had a similar, a little bitty scope like this, probably not as nice as these were um, back in the day, and uh, that's kind of what got me interested. And, you know, now I'm president of the Astronomical Society out there, and I've been very active for the last few years. And we're really doing some neat stuff out there. New planetarium, library scopes, two new telescopes, new computer to run it, new presentation system in the Astronomy Center. So lots of stuff happening out there. We're getting uh, full crowds on most of our events. Um, please come out, check us out, see what we're all about. I think you'll be amazed. We're one of the best kept secrets in Sturgeon Bay. A lot of people don't know we're out there. A lot of people check it out. Um, yes, uh, I think especially up in Sister Bay. There's the Sister Bay program Sister Bay. been very active. Well, we have two scopes up there and yeah, two three in, here. Two in Anchor Harbor. Okay, and those and are brand new. Here. And two here. And two here. And so. they do have to be taken from and returned to the library itself. You can't point bring it to a different branch. Yeah, and they don't fit the drop box, so you yeah. got to bring them in yourself. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. But they are in all, you know, so, all parts of the So place. basically six telescopes spread out through the... Um, peninsula that you yeah. can check out and it's been a very well received program it was a program that was started out in New Hampshire mm -hmm. many years ago and it's kind of spreading out across the country more and more libraries are doing it we jumped on it quite a few years ago already and uh, we we're one of the first in the Midwest to have this program available and I'm real happy that we can share yeah thank you very much for yeah. um, bringing it to the any other questions are you going to check it out Bob? Um, did you want to you go ahead. I've done it a couple times already, so. Oh, I'll, I'll check it out tonight then. Perfect. Again. Okay. All right. I'll give you a one-on-one -on -one quick lesson on how to use it then. So I think we're all set then. Thank you.